What's good boys, your favorite TV star Peppa Pig here, back at it again with what if Deku flipped the script. Now I know guys, I made this what if such a long time ago and never finished it, but I just recently rewatched Cobra Kai, and let me tell you guys, I have a brand new fire that was ignited within me, that screamed, finish the what if, but I thought, why finish it if it was such a long time ago if I could just revamp it and rewrite the story that I had originally made. So I'm going to be changing a couple of things and I know you guys are going to love it. So with that said, the like for today's video is going to be a thousand likes and once you guys smash that, I'll definitely be sure to drop a part two. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Question, question. Yeah, you, over there. Okay, so Izuku, I know that being at the top of your field must feel incredible, but we have to know, how did you become the number one hero? What was your journey like? <laughs> Becoming the number one hero? Oh uh, man, that takes me back. Well, it all started when I was 13. There I was, I was walking home from school, and when I was doing so, a colleague of mine, Katsuki Bakugo, or formerly known as Lord Explosion Murder, AKA, dynamite was over here and you know during our childhood things used to be a lot more different between me and him to put it lightly you know we got into a couple of scruffles when we were young but eventually we ended up becoming best friends the early years weren't too kind to me i don't know why i made that sound effect but just know that's like me like changing perspectives and like transferring it from izuku telling the story to actually pov izuku anyways izuku would be walking down the street right now, as he's walking down the street, getting close to his apartment complex where he lives out with his mom and stuff, Bakugo and his goons would be following close behind Izuku as one of them would actually end up throwing a spitball at him. Now, Izuku would wipe it off and from here, Izuku would be having a Pepto-Bismol in his hand as, you know, his mom felt a little sick that day, right? Now, Izuku holding this would just be walking home and Bakugo was like, you know, being a jerk as usual. The goons would eventually get closer and closer to Deku, and Izuku would say, Bakugo, please, not today. But Bakugo says, <laughs> it's funny, I thought I was the one who was in charge and got to pick when I didn't, didn't pick on you. And I feel like today is one of those days, as he pushes Deku onto the ground, and from here his goons grab the Pepto-Bismol and dump it over Deku's head. It would be at this moment that some random guy with a new car would end up coming in by the name of Johnny Lawrence, right? The dude comes in, he parks, and then he just goes inside, right? But as he's going inside, he would notice that some kid with green hair is running towards that direction. Now Izuku's running over there as fast as he can as Bakugo and his goons are chasing after him trying to beat him up since Deku trying to get away from Bakugo ended up kicking one of the goons right in the nuts right and as he did that Izuku would run as fast as he can right trying to get away and Bakugo with throwing explosions trying to catch up to him to get him even faster would eventually push Deku onto Johnny's car right now Johnny seeing this would be like hey watch the watch the ride as you know Bakugo would say beat it old man unless you want to get hurt and, you know, from here, Johnny would say, what did you say to me, kid? And, you know, Izuku would be watching this and would just look at him and say, dude, it's better if you just leave. Just leave me alone. I, I, I'll be fine. And Bakugo's like, yeah, listen to the nerd. As from here, Johnny's like, say that again, kid. And Bakugo goes, get lost, old man. As from here, Johnny looks to Bakugo and just thinks, all right. As he gets closer and closer to Bakugo and eventually says, say that one more time and bakugo says you heard me blasting explosions from his you know from his palms as uh you know johnny grabs his arm and then twists it and pretty much ends up spraining it and slamming him onto his car as the other two goons look at johnny and would immediately be like oh uh, yeah we're gonna go you know because bakugo the strongest just got completely taken down by this old guy so they run and bakugo would be sitting there writhing in pain he would try to shoot an explosion at johnny with his other hand but johnny just docks it and then pretty much punts him in the head right he puts him in the head with his head right he headbutts him and from here Bakugo would be like ah, it, I'll, I'll get you next time as you know Deku just gets up and you know seeing Bakugo on top of Johnny's car knocked out would think to himself that was awesome he then turns to Johnny and asks him what that was and Johnny would say uh, just some karate kid that's it as you know Izuku would say what kind and Johnny would say 
Cobra Kai, but what's it to you? As from here, he grabs his bags and makes his way inside. But before he does, Izuku says, wait, if I could just learn, if I could just learn how to fight like you, maybe they wouldn't pick on me so much anymore. And Johnny would say, kid, you being a loser does not make, does not make it a problem for me, all right? So, you know, go ahead and try to get trained by somebody else. Go take boxing or something. And Izuku from here would just look down as he, you know, he grabs his stuff and makes it inside. Bro has to take a shower because he has all that sticky pink stuff all over him. Pause! As, you know, Izuku from here, you know, he goes home and he takes a shower, right? Now, what pretty much ends up happening after this is Izuku would end up just thinking to himself that, you know, being the way that he is now isn't really working. So tomorrow, he would go over to Johnny after getting picked on once again by Bakugo even harder. He would now have a scar on him because of how badly Bakugo beat him. Would go up to Johnny and say, hey, are you sure you can't train me? The dude left this on me today. I just need to learn how to defend myself. And Johnny says, look, if you don't want people to pick on you, stop being such a loser. Flip the script or something. And Deku would think to himself, flip the script. That's never thought about it like that as izuku from that same day he would ask his mom to go to the hair salon as he would change his whole look from here izuku dyes his hair and you know he would stop wearing that loser like clothes you know izuku starts deciding to go to the gym he bulks up a little bit and he would start getting his confidence as a month would go by and izuku would be a little bit bigger you know what i mean than before now it would be at this point that izuku would end up pretty much arriving to school and what would end up happening is Deku would, you know, just be like, I'm gonna flip the script, right? And so, you know, he finally sees Johnny one day and Johnny would say, whoa, kid, you know, you look a lot different than before. As Izuku says, yeah, I ended up t deciding to take your advice and flip the script, old man. As you know, Johnny's like, <laughs> nice, nice lingo, kid. As from here, he's like, so, still wanna learn karate? As Izuku looks to him with a smirk and says, sure thing. From here, Izuku goes on to train in Cobra Kai for about one for a couple of months. Let's say he trains in Cobra Kai for a couple of months, right? And it would be at this point that Izuku would finally begin gaining confidence, changing his attitude. And with this happening, Izuku would get a lot stronger because Izuku would have had about two years of this because at the time that he meets Johnny, he would actually be 12 years old. I think I said 13 at the beginning, but I want to change it to 12 where he would train for one entire year. And after this year would pass, Izuku would not really get in the way of Bakugo and Bakugo would not really mess with Deku during that time. But eventually one day Izuku would be in the cafeteria, right? And when Izuku's there with in, um, you know, in the cafeteria, he would be talking to this girl that he's been, you know, looking up. At, at looking up and down every now and then right and you know he's spitting his game he's trying to riz her up and bakugo seeing this would walk over there with his tray and you know just look at the goons and be like hey watch this as he goes over towards the girl and says this guy bothering you as you know the girl we're gonna give her name linda she's like nah bakugo he's fine um we were just talking as bakugo says oh well now we're gonna just be talking izuku you can get lost now as from here you know deku looks to bakugo and he's like get lost who do you think you're talking to and bakugo looks at him and says <laughs> it looks like you finally grew a pair look if you don't get lost i'm gonna have to blow you to smithereens as from here, Linda just looks at Deku with the word expression, and Izuku cockily smiles as he says, Do it, Bakugo. And from here, Bakugo throws an explosion, which Deku would catch with one arm, and then flip Bakugo onto the table as he grabs the tray and smacks the side of Bakugo's head with it. From here, the goons would look to Deku as they would say, Oh no, nah, I remember that, as they run away. And Bakugo would be on the table just thinking to himself, Damn it! That's two times in the past year! As, you know, Bakugo looks to him and asks him when in the world he learned that, right? But Bakugo realizes it was probably that old man. That's the reason that Deku's been acting so different lately. And from here, Bakugo would just decide whatever. He'll just like, he'll just, uh, you know, mess with Deku another day and get stronger, right? But from here, Izuku looks to the girl Linda and, you know, she smiles at him and he literally gets her number. She would write it down on his arm and Izuku from here would go home with the biggest smile on his face as he talks to Johnny and is like, hey, Johnny, I ended up getting a girl's number today. And he's like, of course you did, kid. You're finally becoming a 
a real man. As from here, you know, Izuku and Johnny, you know, they crack a little, they, they crack a cold one as, you know, Johnny doesn't really care about age. You know what I mean? Like he's trying to put him on and Deku wouldn't exactly like it, like the taste, but he hides that and he's like, huh, some good stuff. And from here, Deku would continue training, getting stronger and stronger every single day, you know, getting popular and pretty much beating up the people who would use to do him wrong. Eventually, Izuku would end up in the principal's office more and more often and Izuku would gain a different reputation than the one he had before. Inko would be worried about him, but Izuku, whenever he would be around Inko, would act like he's the nice guy that he's always been. And for now, he's kind of having a little bit of his villain arc, seeing as, you know, things haven't exactly been the best. But as of this moment, Izuku would finally be feeling like he's getting somewhere. Eventually, the final day of middle school would come by, or no, not the final day, but the halfway month, right? Like, there would be about, like, um, like eight more months left in school. And, you know, one day, the teacher walks in with a couple of papers and a stack as he's like, all right, kid. We need to start looking into the future. Any of you guys know what you're going to do? As you know, they're all like, uh, no, not really. And then the guy's like, all right, then. So here's some job applications. You know, he starts handing them out. And from here, you know, the students are like, uh, whatever. And then he's like, ah, I'm just kidding. You, I know you guys all want to become heroes, you know, right? And then the class goes crazy. And, you know, eventually Bakugo stands up and starts proclaiming himself to be the future number one. But everybody watching would just be thinking to themselves, eh, I'm not sure. I mean, Deku's looking like he might be stronger than you, and you actually have a quirk. And people just, you know, they start making jokes at Bakugo, and Bakugo's like, what'd you say? As from here, Deku chuckles to himself as well. And, you know, he'd be talking to Linda in the back as he's, you know, sitting reversed on a chair. You guys know how chairs are, like, like meant to be sat forward? He's sitting on it backwards, so, like, his legs are on the edge and all that. And he's talking to Linda, and you know he's risen her up still, you know what I mean? Like, he ended up dating her, and what would pretty much end up happening is class would end, right? Now, as class ends, Bakugo decides that it's about time that he, you know, shows Deku who the real boss is, right? He's tired of people thinking that Deku's stronger than him, right? So he's like, I'm finally going to do something about it, Deku. As from here, you know, Bakugo goes up to him with his goons. And this time around, they would all three of them attack Deku at once, right? Now, they lunge at him and Deku would immediately get caught off guard as, you know, um, he realizes that he's in a bad situation. You know, three on one, it doesn't matter how good his Cobra Kai is, this time the goons are attacking, right? And Bakugo seems a lot stronger than before. So Deku decides, all right, best course of action, jump out the window. So what does Deku do? Deku punches one of the goons in the face, causing him to throw off the whole, like, um, team attack. He would get in the way of Bakugo, and Bakugo would have to stop for a second to not injure his, uh, you know, his friends, as Deku would just jump out the window, and it would be two stories high, but Deku would, you know, parkour roll on the ground, and would eventually just grab, you know, um, his backpack, which he threw out the window to break the glass, and from here, Izuku just starts running under the bridge, as Bakugo would be like, come on, let's go, and, you know, they try to look for him, but Izuku took the different path home, and they just couldn't find him this time. They eventually make their way to an alleyway, and Bakugo and would just be kicking this can down the road as simultaneously izuku would find himself in the sludge villain situation in which the sludge villain completely engulfs deku and would take him over right now deku would be about to die when suddenly he would be saved by all might who would be standing there in all of his glory being all like ah, ha, 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 ha. i'm all might you know i'm here and you know texas smash and all that stuff and for a brief moment izuku would go on to just absolutely start simping for all might just the way that we all know him to be and you know he eventually like snaps out of it realizing that you know that's not who he is anymore right but he does start asking all might for an autograph right and what would end up happening is you know all might gives it to him and then afterwards izuku asks him if he can become a hero without a quirk to which all might would reply no as deku would get angry and would tell all might to screw himself saying that he's going to become a hero regardless of having a quirk or not and prove all might wrong as from here izuku would walk off angrily and all might would end up accidentally dropping the sludge bottle which you know bakugo and the gang would be kicking and eventually would lead to bakugo getting completely caught up in the uh, in the sludge villain incident as you know in some Dimitri and Hog type stuff, um, what would end up happening is that, you know, Izuku sees Bakugo get caught up in danger. And even though, you know, he knows that he and Bakugo aren't good, deep down, he knows that, you know, he would, he doesn't want Bakugo to die. So what would end up happening is Izuku, you know, in a split moment, as his body would just move by itself, would begin rushing towards the direction of Bakugo trying to save him, right? He throws his backpack at the direction of the sludge villain with a pencil hitting the sludge villain in the eye and then running in 
he would begin trying to clot the sludge villain trying to save Bakugo. And the sludge villain would throw an attack at Deku, which Deku would dodge and rush back, grabbing Bakugo, giving him a moment to breathe. As, you know, watching all of this would be All Might in the background who sees how heroic this kid truly is, right? And All Might watching this would think to himself that he needs to step in, right? He would use plus ultra and snap into his big muscle form, hitting the sludge villain away and finally saving everything. And as all would be coming down, Izuku would be told that he, you know, he could have got hurt and all that stuff. But All Might, who would be, you know, just watching Deku get completely berated by all the heroes, would eventually catch up to him once Deku leaves. And Bakugo would be like, you didn't help me for nothing. Don't think that this changes anything between us. And Bakugo, you know, he angrily stomps off. And eventually, Izuku would be in the presence of All Might himself. As All Might decides to catch up to Deku, and what would end up happening is actually something pretty cool. Where All Might would tell Izuku that he thinks he can become a hero. Before, he wasn't sure, but now... He's 100% sure he's found his successor. The heart of a hero is something that you can't find anywhere. And regardless of him having a quirk or not, this might help him a lot when it comes to his hero journey. So Deku looks to All Might and would ask him what in the world he's talking about. And All Might would begin to explain that he has the ability to pass on his quirk. And that he thinks that he is worthy of being his successor. Following this, Izuku, you know, would like... Uh, the, the entire screen would fade to dark and then it'd be like kids we'll be right back ad would play and don't worry no ads actually gonna play but you know that's just me playing around and anyways you know the story would come back and izuku you know the screen would finally fade into itself right and izuku would have his mouth wide open and be like what as from here all might just looks at deku and would be like you heard me kid you know i have a power that can be passed on and from here he would begin to explain the ability of one for all telling deku the truth of everything with izuku wrapping his head around this and slowly geeking out for a second as all might would realize that izuku is a lot smarter than he would actually let off and would pretty much what end up happening is deku would actually end up receiving one for all and you guys might be like okay but that doesn't change anything but yes it does because izuku this time around is more than fit enough to actually receive one for all and be able to use it at the very minimum five percent which is what actually izuku is going to be starting off with right now izuku would get the ability and the next day izuku would actually end up having to meet up with you know um all might on the beach now izuku would have ended up told, telling johnny about the entire situation and johnny would think that it's actually awesome that he got the quirk from all might seeing that this is really going to help him out when it comes to his hero career and stuff like that and izuku would be thinking the same thing you know like he's so lucky that all might saw him and that all might's willing to give him a push in the right direction right and so for the following couple of weeks all might and Deku would work on the ability of one for all. Now, for the first week, Deku wouldn't really get nowhere because it's like he thinks that the quirk is so much more special than it is until Johnny would finally tell him something which would kind of open the eyes of Deku and make him realize that he needs to stop idolizing All Might, which would lead Deku to finally being able to use his abilities to the max, right? Being able to pump out 5% and learning full cowling, showing it off to Johnny and quite frankly, impressing him a lot. Now, Johnny would end up actually training Deku as well, continuing with his, uh, you know, Cobra Kai martial arts, as Johnny, as of this moment, kind of starts to feel as though he's kind of losing Deku to All Might, right? Kind of getting a little bit jealous, if I might say, right? But what would pretty much end up happening is eventually we would get to a point where, like, about three months down the line, Johnny would finally snap and would kind of show that he's jealous towards, you know, the All Might and Izuku situation. And Izuku, seeing this, would actually, you know, have a sit down talk with Johnny where he tells him that, you know, no one's ever going to replace the spot that Johnny has and that, you know, Johnny has been like a father to him ever since he came into his life. You know, he gives him a heartfelt thank you. And from here, what would end up happening is Izuku would actually make it so that Izu um, Johnny and All Might can actually meet them, meet each other. Right. And what would pretty much end up happening is Johnny and All Might would immediately, you know, actually be cool with each other because, you know, Johnny actually likes All Might. He was just a little bit jealous of him. But regardless, what would end up pretty much happening is Izuku just gets way, way stronger, way earlier than the original. And now Izuku has combat experience as well as the ability of one for all. But Izuku being the personality that he is, he doesn't want to wait to become a hero to fight bad guys. He wants to do it right now, right now. You know what I mean? Like Izuku is not trying to wait at all. He's trying to like fight some villains right now. You know what I mean? 
And so Izuku decides, all right, I'm going to like, I'm done with this. Like, I'm going to start doing things on my own. So what pretty much ends up happening is that Izuku gets like this all black outfit. You know, he gets like this mask and all that, this shysty mask. And what would pretty much end up happening is Izuku goes on to pretty much be a vigilante. Now, he would be a vigilante for a couple of weeks, and eventually the name that Izuku would end up coming up with would finally stick with the, you know, the people. Now, one day, Izuku would be out doing his vigilante activities, and he would bite off a bit more than he could chew, because he would actually run into a gang of villains, which the leader of the organization would be Wolfram. They would be robbing a bank. And Izuku being the only one nearby would actually be the only one in the alleyway that they took to escape to stop them. And Izuku immediately activates 5%, right? And he's getting ready to fight them. One of the villains has a knife quirk where he can turn his arms into like blades. And the other one has this cool ability of just super strength. Then Wolfram has the ability to control metals, right? And Izuku would be like, hey, put that stuff down. It doesn't belong to you, right? And, you know, telling them that he's going to beat them up as the villains would all smile and be like, <laughs> get lost, kid. Wolfram using his metal ability to hit Deku with a piece of metal, which would hurt, but Deku would get angry and rush in at the super strength one, right? Now they both rush in and they would grab each other trying to pretty much wrestle as Deku realizes that this guy is almost about as strong as he is which would actually scare Zuku considering that Deku didn't expect any of these villains to be half as strong but eventually what would end up happening is Deku beats him and the villain with the super strength would be like that's impressive you know like a kid keeping up with me and Izuku punches him into the trash can in which the other villain would come in you know with the blade quirk and try to actually catch Deku off guard but what Deku would do is actually you know kick him and you know kind of push him off and all that stuff right but wolfram would end up actually grabbing izuku with the metal thing and izuku would be restrained as the dude with the blades would be coming in and izuku would close his eyes thinking to himself that that's it he messed up like he literally just got himself killed before he could even become a hero like what a waste of a successor he is izuku would be thinking and his life would just be flashing before his eyes as this man would just like be coming at him ready to pretty much cut Deku's head off which would be what Deku's thinking as suddenly some random person up from above would jump in as with eyes glowing red with these goggles on hair floating in the air and Izuku would realize immediately it's a racer head as from here Deku has to watch as Aizawa would take down all of these villains and you know using his eraser quirk would do it easily since their quirks were deactivated and Aizawa would be able to free Deku being like what are you doing here kid I heard about a vigilante that's been lurking around at night you better not be you as Deku you know he kind of just looks at him and says sorry and from here he would take him into the station where All Might ends up arriving and being like what were you thinking kid as you know Deku has to get bailed out by All Might and from here Aizawa looks to All Might and says you better put a good leash on this kid because you're lucky that if it that that it was you who ended up bailing him out because if it was anybody else this would have gone in his permanent record you know that right All Might as All Might says yeah Aizawa I know but the kid he's He's, he's special. Trust me, Aizawa. It's worth it to keep it on the down low what just happened. He's going to be somebody great someday. Trust me.